Hello, this is Matt from Matt Heaney Apps and welcome to part 10 in our series covering all of the basics of Swift Free. In this video, we will take a look at structs. So let's jump straight into Xcode. Okay, so into Xcode and we want to get started with a playground. We will call this structs and save it up somewhere nice and safe. And we'll get rid of this line here so that we have a nice blank playground. Okay, so today we will look at another way of creating our own custom types and we will take a look at structs or structures. With structs, we can create custom types which will store values together and will let us easily use this data with the use of methods. So as always, that will make more sense if we look at an example. So in this video, let's pretend we have a game. And in this game, we have a map. This map is on a 10 by 10 grid. And every player in the game is somewhere on this 10 by 10 grid. So they're in a space on this map. So we have to find a way to store the position of each player. So each player will have an X position and a Y position, where they are going across the map and where they are going up the map. OK, so one way we could do this is by simply having two variables or two constants for each player. So, for example, we could have var player one X position. So where they are across the grid will be an int and they are in space 10 going across and player one Y position. So where they are going up the grid, they will be in space five. So player one's position on this map in this game will be 10, five, 10 blocks across five up okay so i mean in a way this does work this would let us store the values of the x and the y of player one but if we wanted more players we'd have to have two more variables or two more constants for each player so we'd have to have player two x position and player two y position but doing it this way there is no link at all between these two values they're completely separate values which to our code aren't linked together really in any way and that could lead to some big problems because say for example for player three we don't set a y position we could give them an x position but not a y position and you know that's a big problem and would probably crash our game somewhere down the line but because the two values for each player aren't linked together in any way this error could go unnoticed so we don't really want to be doing it this way because values are just separate so you might be thinking we could do a tuple. We could say var player one position of type a tuple of two ints, which are equal 10 and five. So the values are now linked together. So player one position holds both 10 and five. So that does link them together. But again, the same problems could arise because when setting up these tuples, you know, mistakes could easily be made. We could try to set up three integers. So this does hold data together, but it's not a set concrete type and we can still make these mistakes. And even if we are 100% extremely careful to only ever have tuples of two integers, this is still really limited. So what we want to do is set up a structure, which would be a defined type, which will not only eliminate these problems, but will also give us a lot more control over this data. Okay, so we don't really want to do it any way like this. So we're going to delete that. Instead, let's set up a structure, which will be a brand new type, just like an integer or a double or a string or a boolean that we can use in our game. So let's have a look how we would do this. Let's say struct, our keyword, and we will name our new type. We will call this position on map. Open curly bracket and drop a line. Now, anything that is a position on map, we want to have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. So where the player is going across the map and where they are going up the map. We can do this with properties. So in the curly brackets for the struct, we will say var, we'll call this X and it will be of type int. And we won't set a value. Drop a line and say var Y also of type int. And again, do not set a value. Now we're not setting values for X and Y here, but by declaring x and y here, what we're saying is, is that any variable or constant that is of type position on map must have an x and it must have a y. Now, what we can do is use position on map as a brand new type in our game. And anything that is of type position on map must have an x and it must have a y. And without an x or a y, 
we will get an error when trying to set this up. So anything that is of type position or map will have these two properties. It will have an X and it will have a Y. Because structs have an automatic initializer made for us, this is all we need to do. You can, however, set up and use a custom initializer for structures, and we will learn all about initializers in the next two videos where we look at classes. So don't worry about that for now, but keep a lookout in the next two videos for initializers because you can also use initializers with structs. So let's say var player one position of type position on map this from here and so equal position on map open bracket and now you can see it's asking us for an x and a y and now about an x and a y we're going to get an error so we have to 100 percent put these two values in and we can use this new type as many times as we want so we can have player two position of type position on map and we have player three position we now have this set structure for holding the information that we need for positions on maps. Okay, so we now have these three variables using our new custom type. So that is now the setup, but how can we use these? Well, if we wanted to get the values from a certain player's position, we can take player one position, which as you can see, it now says is of type position on map, and we can say dot, and now we can get access to the X, which as you can see is 10, player one's X is 10, or the Y, player one position's Y is five. So anything that is of type position on map, we can now get access to the X, and to the Y. So player two position, X is eight. We can also change these values. So player three position dot X, we could change from eight to say five. Now, if we take a look at player three's X, as you can see, it's updated. So anything that is of type position on map must have these two properties and must hold a value for X and a value for Y. It is now a type in our code, just like an integer or just like a double. And anything that is of type position on map must have an X and must have a Y because position on map has the properties X and Y. So that is what a structure is and what properties are. A structure is our custom type used to store data together and properties are any values that anything that is of type position on map must have. But we can take this even further. With our custom types, we can set up methods. And with methods, we can run certain tasks on anything that is of type position on map. So say for example, in this game, there's a feature where you can take a player and you can reveal their position on the grid. And what this will do, this will simply print a message that says this player is at, and then their X coordinate, and then their Y coordinate. So what we can do in between the curly brackets for our structure, we can set up what is very similar to a function, but this function can only be run on any variable or constant that is of type position on map. So let's take a look. We'll say func and we will call this print player position. So it is the exact same as a function. We can do the same things that we would do with a function. We can pass parameters in, we can return values. Anything we can do with a function, we can do with a method. And the only difference is, is that we can only run this on a variable or a constant that is of type position on map. So we can take player one position and we can run print player position on player one position or on player two position or on player three position. So what we want this method to do, we want to take the position on map and we want to reveal the position. So we will say print and we will print this player is at. And now what we would do is we will print self.x and self.y. So what does this mean? self means whichever variable or whichever constant that is of type position on map we have run this method on so if we ran this method on player one position self would mean player one position if we ran this method on player two position self would mean player two position and so on let's run this method so to run this method we have to take a variable or a constant that is of type position on map and we will then say dot print player position so what this will then do this will take player one position and we will run this and this is saying take the x and take the y of player one position and print it 
So as you can see, this player is at 10 and 5, which they are. Now, if we ran the exact same method, but on player 2 position, we will get the coordinates for player 2. Because this time, as we're running this on player 2 position, self means player 2 position. So the x is player 2 positions x, and the y is player 2 positions y. Okay, so these custom types, not only can we store data, but we can run tasks using the data. And because this is a method and not a function, we can only run this on a variable or a constant that is of type position or map. So if for example, we had an integer, we can't run this method on this. We can only run this on a constant or a variable that is of type position or map. So with structures, we can set up custom types that hold data together and we can set up methods which are tasks that we can run using the data for variables or constants that are of this custom type. So that was our look at structs. As always, post any questions down in the comments and thank you very much for watching. Hit like, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Goodbye.